In my previous videos, I drew atoms to look like this. Electrons orbiting the nucleus in concentric circles. This is the Bohr model, developed by Niels Bohr in 1913. In this model, electrons are shown to be arranged in shells, with each shell being able to accommodate up to 2n square number of electrons. However, increasing understanding of electrons means that the Bohr model is inaccurate and simplified. To begin with, each shell can be further divided into subshells, sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental, with the subshells further divided into orbitals which cannot be accurately portrayed in the Bohr model. In these orbitals, electrons do not move in an orderly fashion, instead chaotically whizzing around without a fixed trajectory. Yet, despite the chaos, they form mathematically perfect orbitals, with each orbital able to accommodate up to two electrons. It should be pointed out that these orbitals show not the electron trajectories, but the possible locations of the electrons at any one point, with the brighter regions being the more frequent locations than the duller regions. The electrons follow three rules when filling up these subshells. A new electron configuration diagram is used in place of the Bohr model, which lacks the portrayal of subshells. Pauli exclusion principle states that no two identical fermions can occupy the same quantum state. For electrons, a quantum state refers to an orbital, and no two identical fermions means that the two electrons occupying the same orbital have opposite half integer spins. Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity indicates that all orbitals of the same subshell must each first be filled with a single electron before pairing can occur. Furthermore, all orbitals with only one electron must have electrons with a parallel spin. Off-bound principle states that electrons will occupy subshells with the lowest energy state before occupying the subshell with the next lowest energy state, and so on. Knowing the energy states of subshells in ascending order to know where the next electron lies may be confusing, but the general rule of thumb is to follow the periodic table. Hydrogen and helium occupy 1s, the first two columns occupy ns, the last six columns occupy np, the transition elements occupy n-1d, and the lanthanides and actinides occupy 4f and 5f respectively, or n-2f. This is where the periodic table currently ends, but when new, heavier elements are synthesized and discovered, there will, theoretically, be G and H subshells. This would be how the electrons are filled up in the new electron model. Each electron is represented by an arrow which indicates its half-integer spin. Pauli exclusion principle dictates that the electrons must be paired up and pointing in the opposite directions. Hunt's rule dictates that each orbital of a subshell must first be filled with an electron, with all lone electrons pointing in the same direction. Off-bound principle dictates that each subshell must be fully occupied before the next subshell can be filled. But the Bohr model, while inaccurate with the absence of subshells, subtly puts in place the three rules of electron configuration. Pauli's exclusion principle is explained by dividing a shell into quarters with two electrons per quarter, instead of dividing a shell into eight with lone electrons, though the half-integer spin of electrons pairs is not shown. Hund's rule explains why each quarter of a shell is filled with an electron first, before the electrons are paired up. Off-bound principle is the reason why electrons fill up the inner shells before progressing outwards, but only up until calcium. In the following atom, scandium, the 21st electron occupies shell 3 instead of shell 4, or more specifically, subshell 3d instead of subshell 4p. As explained by off-bound principle, 3d has a lower energy state than 4p, but it is hard to explain why it is so in the Bohr model, where subshells are absent.